the U.S. could spend on food and staple goods in a year would likely be able to grow and increase as the amount of gold the U.S. could afford to buy back would increase in proportion to its budgeted savings. 4. Is it feasible for us now, beginning in 2012, to return to use of only gold coins for money? Besides the popular sentiment to do so, nothing else is really prerequisite to being able to accomplish such a transitional phase. The U.S. government, however, remains blissfully ignoring this fact as of yet. There are arguments that can be made that the planchette factories are not in place to mint gold coins fast enough to provide the U.S. national economy with enough gold to circulate fast enough for everyone to be able to begin substituting it for paper fiat currency USD bills. If the alternative were that a, quote, run on the dollar, unquote, were to occur in conjunction with hyperinflation, and U.S. bank holdings not be retrievable in gold, then obviously it is preferable at least to try. However, in truth, there is a risk of underproduction due as much to unpreparedness to mint gold coins en masse in terms of factory production capacity as due to the Fed having sold almost all the U.S. government holdings of the gold commodity to the IMF and China. The reason the Greek government is undergoing a revolution now is that due to the Fed bailing them out in USDs instead of gold, they have cut their austerity programs, equivalent to the U.S. social security programs, and declared, essentially, bankruptcy to their U.S. creditor, the privately owned Fed. So, assuming by the time you are reading this, as it has not yet, no hyperinflation of staples prices and no run on the dollar has occurred, it is not too late to implement such a policy as switching the USD circulation sum, X, into its equivalent quantity in holdings of gold, sum, Y. Assuming all else were untouched, then the quantity of money in circulation within the U.S. borders could be substituted by gold in a day. Then the only question is, how much gold would the quantity of the entire U.S. circulating liquid assets of our fluid economy buy? 5. How can we implement this transitional phase to replace all circulating cash currency within the borders of the U.S. economy with gold coins? The answer is twofold. A. Repeal legislations that enact legal stipulation against gold ownership, the tax import and the tariff transport of it, and pass firm legislation that the U.S. government, independently of the Fed private bank's holdings alone, will acquire until it does possess enough gold to honor with weight of it all backings of consumer savings accounts, mortgage assets holdings, and stock-rated bonds held by FDIC member banks, for a start. Ultimately, it would help a little to audit the Fed, but it is possible to pass legislation to effectively outmaneuver it in its own tactics, and that serves the same purpose as simply abolishing it would. B. Enforce FDIC member banks to begin circulating the gold coins in exchange for currently circulating paper cash and set up a new pricing standard based on assuming all transactions will be able to be translated into a gold coin amount as easily as possible. For example, if USD cash begins to decrease in value rapidly, as in the onset of hyperinflation, gold values would remain relatively stable. However, the translation per transaction value ratio would have to remain relatively stable and would thus depend more or less entirely on the gold half of that equation. Thus, if there's not enough gold, there would not be enough to back it in the event of a sudden decrease in value of USD paper currency. Again, it's not at all a question of not enough gold because any gold is more than none. It's a question of providing additional consumer safety assurances and increased paramilitary presence in the form of protecting and servicing the gold dispensary customers, 
i.e. the FDIC insured banks. Finding people to fill jobs protecting the transportation and distribution of a new gold currency during such a transitional phase would require implementing a new sector of the economy requiring the homeland deployed U.S. military, private military contracting firms, state militias, acting public police agencies, and all gun-carrying citizens to coordinate into a single sector of security providers for the transfer of the U.S. government holdings of gold fairly to the U.S. citizens to use as circulated currency. There would have to be a single law stating quite efficiently how to solve both point A and point B, and that law should ensure a new level of consumer protection and improving global market confidence. The Gold Coin Act of 2013 must be such a law. 6. Will implementing such a transitional phase to restore the U.S. economy to a circulated gold coin result in accomplishing the goals of ensuring consumer protection and improving global market confidence? Yes, it is possible to replace all paper money with gold coins in bank holdings in a single day. Within a week, all paper money could be purged and replaced by gold coins. However, the trickiness results not only in distributing the holdings of gold to individual banks to begin the transitional phase of redistribution, but in providing a temporary transitional currency exchange rates window between the value of the USD Fed notes and the price of the gold commodity on the international commodities exchange market. For example, if you have gold being traded to FDIC member banks at the rate of gold on a Monday, then there is a run on the dollar on Tuesday. The value of cash drops and the cost of gold and exchange rates skyrockets. Then by Wednesday, the cost of gold would have already become too high to back an exchange by the government to the FDIC banks if they were to run out and need more to redistribute it in exchange as more people close their credit accounts, etc. Essentially, the argument here runs that implementing a return to gold coin circulation is a, quote, doomsday scenario, equivalent to causing a run on the dollar and destroying the economic value of the Fed's paper money. There, thus, would need to be included in the passage of a gold coin act into law a stipulation clause stating quite clearly that no such scenario would be allowed to occur. And this would mean backing this statement up with the aforementioned necessary creation of a local military sector soldiers for the banks. If, in short, everyone emptied their entire accounts in terms of dollars out into a sum of gold in one day, there would need to be assurances made this would not result in either public mass riots nor in martial law enforcing a police state. 7. Ultimately, we must ask, why gold currency? Why do we need a gold coin? Why here? Why now? We, the U.S. people, have to take our medicine. We have to accept that people will want to steal gold and that banks are allowed to hire security to protect their holdings and transportation of gold. Aside from this, we have to restore our own individual liberties to the highest extent we possibly can. If banks can hire security to protect large sums of gold, each citizen who uses gold coins ought to be allowed to carry a gun. This means trusting everyone alive to be responsible with a weapon, even teaching children the importance of and how to properly handle a gun. This level of trust is only possible in a truly free and open society. We can only restore individual rights to gun ownership if we stop legislating on a national level what constitutes a quality curriculum in publicly funded schools? If the government gives an anonymous contribution of funds to the implementation of education via socialized welfare through the education department, it does not mean it is buying the right to control the curriculum of schools to teach us all to advocate the causes of certain select special interests, such as anti-gun rights lobbyists, 
anti-tobacco lobbyists, pro-foreign militarism, no-bid contractors, etc. Teachers do not want to tell their students how to behave. They want to teach them their topics, not enforce social political platforms. Likewise, we should strive to keep our own agendas out of our higher learning institutions altogether. But again, this can only happen in a truly free and open society, which is a lot different from what we currently have. Why America? Why 2013? There is a new world order. There has been a move toward global government for the last 100 years at least that has yielded us today the United Nations. The United Nations arose as a result, a veritable afterbirth, of the Nuremberg Trials. The World Court was summoned to try the Axis forces' political leaders for war crimes against humanity. As a consequence, the League of Nations, which was originally created by the CFR, who also bankrupted Germany and then funded the Nazi Party, was reformed into the modern UN. The UN, as a platform for all nations to use to petition for redress of grievances, succeeds. Beyond this, the UN is powerless, and the ineffectuality of NATO and coalitions of mixed national allies to provide troops for any effective multinational military reprisal against individual national tyrants is a joke. For an African nation to be filmed while starving, without even being able to invoke the international aid of global community groups like the World Health Organization and the Red Cross, is a travesty of bigger proportions even than 9-11. The UN provides no foreign aid and no foreign military support. It is effectively useless, aside from as a platform for its member nations to stand on and petition for redress of grievances. Now, a world court, on the other hand, is essentially the opposite of the modern UN. In point of fact, a truly just world court would likely be trying the very heads of those nations whose ambassadors sit on the Security Council of the UN now. So, we have little choice but to use the U.S. as an example. Whether the current U.S. government system and those who support it and benefit off it like that or not, Perhaps this sets my opinion on this matter apart from many of my fellow Americans. Perhaps not. Perhaps most of us agree in silence. Perhaps only a few of us disagree at all. But theirs are the only voices we hear, as with the modern media. Who knows if I am right or wrong? History will tell. If we want to return the wealth to the people, we have to do it directly by re-implementing the gold coin as the sole legal tender in the U.S. Gold. Now. Peace. Jonathan Barlow Gee, Tallahassee, Florida, USA. January 8th and 9th, 2012.